Hey traders, I'm Delgado, Marketing Stats Commentator at Global Prime Forex. Remember, make no mistake, I'm always thinking about how can I deliver the most value to you, to the viewer. So along those lines, I just finished an interview with an algorithm trader, Adjun Futil, who's been able to generate more than 1,000% in his account in less than six months. You want to find out all the golden nuggets that he had to share, then this is the interview for you not to miss out. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer, this is an interview that unfortunately it didn't come through in terms of the sound quality from his side as crisp as I would have wished. That being said, I do recommend that you just place headphones and you will be fine, okay? Now, with that being said, enjoy the interview. If you like the video, you are getting good value out of it i do obviously encourage you to like the video to share it around and to subscribe to the channel as i said enjoy the interview hi everyone this is ivan Delgado, market sales commentator at global prime forex today with me i have a special guest is adrian uh fudale uh yes. did i pronounce that correctly you did, it's perfect. Yeah. Got it right. Okay, so Adrian is a active user in our Discord room. He's been actually sharing his insights, uh, comments, and trading ideas about the Forex market. That's the market that he mainly trades uh, in a regular basis. And um, yeah, welcome to uh, today's uh, show, today's video. Adrian, how are you doing? All good? Good, Adrian. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, now, Today's video is going to be a deep dive into Adrian's uh, EA uh, trading, uh, algorithm trading approach. Uh, he is uh, based in Toronto, Canada, and he's been trading part-time for about five years. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Sure. And you own and manage a full-service IT corporation in Toronto Correct. for about 15 years, right? Correct. 15, yeah. One five. Mm -hmm. And education-wise degree in electrical and computer engineering, a master's degree in business administration, and you Correct. consider yourself an animal rights activist and a vegan Correct. for three plus years. But I would say that I digress a little bit. So, you know, I'm going to go back to what really matters today, which is going to be about, you know, creating an interview and get, getting that content out there for all of you that are into algorithm based systems to benefit let's get into the meat of the bone let's get into the substance of uh, the conversation so that you as i said uh, those that are viewing this video hopefully can gain uh, the most insights around some of the strategic approaches that he's been following over the years to develop an automatic system and you know adrian for sure has done his first uh, share of work in this domain and i'm sure that uh, this will be a valuable conversation now uh, the very first question that i want to ask you adrian is like you know every single trader has a story how he became interested in financial markets what's yours um i'm not sure exactly what led me into it um I mean, I, I find that a lot of people I went to school with in engineering somehow ended up in business for some reason. A lot of engineers ended up in real estate. Um, a lot of them ended up in finance. Mm -hmm. I think that engineering and uh, markets and business kind of lend themselves towards each other because um, a lot of business is about problem solving and engineering is about problem solving. So the, the, kind of, the two kind of go hand in hand. Um, but I guess uh, maybe what led me to it is um, also I, because I have my own company, I'm able to work from home or you know um, from other locations that I don't have to be at a client or at a job site all the time. So mm -hmm. it gave me a spare time to kind of research into uh, uh, into the markets and just to see what's happening and, and put some time and dedication towards that. Whereas if I was working, say, a nine to five full time job, it might have been more restricted in in the sense of doing that. Mm -hmm. So I think it was just the, the time and trying to find, uh, uh, you know, a different business opportunity. It was nothing really specific that led me to it. Okay, awesome. Now, how would you define yourself uh, as a trader? What is your trading methodology? What time frames are you looking at? Perhaps if you want to start perhaps minimizing your, your webcam and yeah. work us through as you consider appropriate, no problem. But yeah, the question yeah, so is like, I, how would you find yourself? What's your trading methodology and what time frames you're looking at? That'll be great sure. if we can get some bit of an insight. So yeah, on that as you already mentioned, I started probably about five years ago. Yeah. Um, and in the beginning, it, it became a challenge for me. It was like, again, engineering, uh, we like to problem solve. 
So I saw it just as a problem that needed to be solved. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know much about markets and the financial markets in general. So a lot of terms that, that people post like with regards to fundamentals and uh, things like interest rates and what the central banks are doing, mm -hmm. I know nothing about that. So I might even come across as, as such a novice in, in this discussion uh, with that. Because for me, I just see it as a mathematical problem. Okay. Um, I, don't see, I don't see the markets as you know, something other than math. Um, it's a problem to be solved, and I'm going to try and figure out the best way to solve it. It's an optimization problem. Um, so, yeah, so obviously my, my perspective then and my, my methodology is a technical perspective. I don't really look at fundamentals. I might look at them like when you post your stuff. I'll look at them just for confirmation and yeah. be like, okay, mm -hmm. that makes sense. That coincides with what my algorithm is doing. Mm -hmm. But really at this point, for probably the past six months to a year, my algorithm just runs on its own. Um, and I just uh, monitor it and I update the, the data that it uses, the data set that it uses, because it constantly needs the back testing um, in, order to, in order to be optimized. Um, so my, my assumptions with the trading, so again, technical trading only, my assumptions are that markets are, are not random. Um, if the markets are random, if they are in fact truly random, then I think none of us can have any success in the markets. It doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. It's like going to the casino. Mm -hmm. So the markets are not random. And if they're not random, that means there's some sort of repetition. And that can apply for both a technical trader or a fundamental trader. If mm -hmm. you're a fundamental trader, you say, okay, when this central bank did this, then the currency did that. And that happened five years ago. So if that, that uh, confluence of things happens again, then we're likely to see the same results. So it's again about markets not being random and being repetitive. So mm. mine is just a technical uh, perspective on that, is that if I can analyze a large enough data set on a currency and find some sort of inefficiency where when this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens, then the market is more, than, more likely than not to do X than take the trade. Mm -hmm. um, and if I can confirm that over a, a multiple years, um, then I have more confidence that that's going to happen. Um, some other assumptions that I have or that I found through the back testing is mm -hmm. that all currencies are different. Um, no two currencies are the same. I know a lot of algorithms and, and experts that you can buy online, they kind of say you can throw it on any currency. You throw it on the Euro, you th throw it on uh, uh, the Aussie, the Kiwi, and it's going to do the same thing. Which mm -hmm. For me, it doesn't even make sense from, from just a logical perspective. I mean, there's the currencies that are, that are closely related with uh, commodities. There are ones which are safe haven currencies. There are ones which are like funding currencies. So they all should act differently. So if somebody, to me, if somebody says this algorithm is going to work on all currencies, all markets, all the time, mm -hmm. it just doesn't make sense for me. So and through my back testing, I confirmed that, that all, uh, all currencies, you can see these are the pairs I trade right now. Um, they all act completely differently. If I use my, my algorithm, and the, the, the data that I've gathered from backtesting, and I take it from, say, the euro versus New Zealand dollar here, and I, I switch it to New Zealand versus Canadian dollar, it, it will be a complete bust. It will, it will completely lose. Mm -hmm. So every currency pair is completely different. Um, the other thing that one of the insights that I developed, which I haven't seen anywhere else, is that the time of the week, the, sorry, the day of the week and the time of the day mm -hmm. are also very important. So you might see a pattern you know, uh, something like this, let's say, and say there's going to be a reversal. Mm -hmm. But if that happens at a different time of the day or on a different day of the week, then it will not do that reversal. So I haven't seen anybody actually propose that anywhere else, that time of day or day of week actually matters mm -hmm. uh, for trading. But I've found that it does. And again, from, from just logical perspective, you got to think like institutional traders, they sleep, right? So they're not trading all the time. The mm -hmm. algorithms are probably running all the time. But mm -hmm. Maybe there's certain times of day where people are monitoring those algorithms. So they're going to take more or less action depending on the time of the day. Um, so yeah, that's incorporated into my, my algorithm as well. So I'll stop for a bit if you want to. Yeah, and, and, and I notice here you are uh, showcasing a daily chart. Is that the trading time frame that by default your EA is going to be uh, attached to and then finding the exploitable opportunities based on past performance and data analytics that you've managed to convey through the daily chart or how do you go about that uh, exploration well, of the chart is here, I've switched, like, I can switch it to like a four hour chart okay. or one hour chart. It doesn't really, oh, my screen is good. Um, it's not going to really make a difference. My, okay. my average trade time is uh, that I calculated from the back testing is about 20 to 60 days. 
uh, on average from the time that the trade mm -hmm. opens until the time that the trade closes. Mm -hmm. So if I keep it on the daily chart, I get to see what I see here, maybe six months or so worth of data. Okay. Um, so yeah, it just gives me a kind of an idea just visually where the market is going, but really it doesn't matter. Okay. So it's going to be independent of the time frame that it gets to be attached to. That, yeah, cool. that your EA. Okay, and do you have a single or multiple EAs running at the same time? Uh, right now, I just have one. You can see on the top corner yeah. here. Mm -hmm. It's actually called Range Expert. I've probably coded manually, I would say, 150 different EAs since I started okay. uh, five years ago. Um, the beginning ones did horribly. Um, and then when I started having a little bit of success, my. Uh, EA was based on uh, mean regression, so yep. mean reversion, re re reversion, yeah. Um, and so it was using different ranges. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called range expert, but it has nothing to do with ranges anymore. <laughs> but I just kept, kept the same name, and this is version forty-five of that that okay. particular EA. But it has nothing to do with ranges. So if anybody sees that, it's not a ranging uh, algorithm anymore. So trend, trend mm -hmm. what happened to the past 149 plus uh, trading algorithms that you have, uh, uh, like, yeah. did you eventually Somewhere. ditch, did you eventually ditch them just because they were not performing as you would have anticipated? And how long have you been using this EA in particular? So this one here, I'm going to say it's about six months, five okay. or six months now, uh, this is number 45. Um, they've all, perf like, in the last four or five, anything above 40, like 41, two, three, mm -hmm. four and five, they all performed half decent, but I always, I'm always thinking of new ideas. Okay. Uh, for example, the version 44 before this, I was talking about um, currencies acting differently on different times of the day, mm -hmm. different hours. But what I found is it actually, it doesn't have to be a specific hour, it just has to be a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Mm -hmm. So the previous version was based on every hour of every day. Now I've found that just having the day itself is enough. So it'll, if it's a Monday, it's going to act this way. If it's a Wednesday, it'll act this way. So I had to recode it, and I made version 45 based on that. So it's kind of tweaking, you could say. It's not complete uh, uh, revamping of the of the A entirely. Yeah, I was about to ask you, do you think that every single time that you have managed to develop a new EA that has, give, that has provided for, uh, an opportunity to perfect your craft and kind of like get to a point of more uh, refinement? To your oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's all it is. It's all refining it now. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I bring up my, I have a chart here somewhere. I'll put this on the screen here. Um, even going back to version, I don't know, where did it start getting decent? So even back at version, yeah, I would say even at version uh, 21 here, mm -hmm. back at version 21, so I was still hitting like over a 13 year period, 1.94 profit factors. Mm -hmm. 2.2 profit factors, 2.1. Then if we go into like version 26, now you see they're increasing a bit. And now I'm like the latest version here. Mm -hmm. I'm hitting uh, all of them are, are roughly two profit factor over the past 14 years. So yeah, it's getting it's getting better. None of them, none of the ones after like version 20, none of them were really horrible, mm -hmm. but just re refining, like you said. And you mentioned that you have to be constantly monitoring your uh, EA so that uh, you can keep up with the market conditions and update accordingly. Uh, how many hours a day or how many hours a week do you have to dedicate to your EAs, to the markets, either it is actively trading or monitoring so that you can continuously optimize and be on top of your game? How many hours do yeah, you have so to? So on average, I would say maybe one to two hours per day now. Okay. Um, but in the beginning, I was spending a bit more time um, because I was losing. <laughs> okay. So I never traded uh, a demo account ever. Mm -hmm. uh, from the beginning, I always traded live accounts because I thought it would be more motivation and more incentive to yeah. either make it work or just this. I can't this, do this. There's and definitely skin in the game, you know, and that. It, it is, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and so I wanted to have that motivation, and that's why I was putting, you know, some days I was spending maybe four or five, six hours even, uh, mm -hmm. you know, trying this, trying that, trying all kinds of different things to see what would what would kind of stick. Mm -hmm. um, but now less so because I find this one working pretty well so far. I mean, so if you look at, at this EA, so I think you can see my MT4 window here. Uh, my balance six months ago was here was $800, I think, is where I kind of, implemented this latest version 45 was eight hundred dollars mm -hmm. my balance now seven thousand and there's open profits of eight thousand this was actually eleven thousand last night yeah. it's down a little bit but um 
yeah, so I mean, for, for that kind of profits in, in a six month, that kind of return in a six month period, I think it's pretty decent for, yeah. for this EA, but who knows, right? You need to, you know, six months is not enough time frame. Mm -hmm. to say, oh, this is, this is the holy grail. I found yeah. it, I'm done, you know, uh, go retire, right? So, yeah. Um, but, but it's, it's, it's going the right direction. So. It does definitely look very promising. And one of the questions that I want to follow up with is that I remember back a few months ago, you did the mistake uh, i mean uh, if i'm wrong please uh, correct me but i do remember that you did blow one account and you went through a very major drawdown just because you were over leveraged in one of the currencies so what what did you learn at that time that now you are going to be able to uh, avoid so that you don't make that mistake again because you were the very first one in the trading room in this court to recognize that you were way over leverage on that currency yeah. so if you can just walk yeah, us through yeah. a little bit yeah for sure so that that currency here that was uh new zealand dollar versus canadian dollar and so the thing that that my back do, do you that, do you mind just moving your webcam towards the the left side of the screen so that people can actually there you go perfect yeah yeah um, great so the, the the one thing that i had to realize and i guess everybody does is that you you will never have a hundred percent success rate mm -hmm. i mean I, maybe there is. I've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. I've never experienced it in any of my back testing. 100% um, win rate. So there are going to be losers. And if you happen to be over leveraged on one of your losers, well, it can make up for all of your winners that you've had over the past six months or a year. Correct. And that's kind of what happened in my case is I, I had a winning streak uh, where it was about the same. It was about maybe 6000 in profit. Again, starting from like a core of like 800 or $1,000. It made about six thousand dollars over six months and i'm like wow this is great how can i make more money well you can make more money by increasing your lot sizes or taking more trades mm -hmm. and that's what i did and i got a little bit carried away my my margin level was hitting like i have restrictions in here like i say if if my margin drops below 200 percent, you can see that in my little information yeah. thing here if, if it goes below 200 percent, stop taking trades if my if I'm gonna lose more than sixty five percent of my balance that I have in my account, mm -hmm. stop taking trades. So there's okay. stops here, mm -hmm. but things were going my, my way. So I started loosening this up. I'm like, oh, maybe two hundred should be one fifty, and it, well, maybe it should be one twenty. So it kind of I, I took away my own restrictions mm -hmm. and kind of let the 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 algorithm <laughs> take it take more trades. Um, and yeah, and then, you know, that was the one that went against me. And when it did, it took out those $6,000. And I, I didn't blow the account. I was left with like okay. seven or $800. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it took the whole six months of profit uh, yeah. away. Mm -hmm. Just so one single you, trade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just one yeah. single trade uh, going wrong, obviously. Uh, or a collection of trades in that market. A collection of trades, yeah. It was uh, probably on the New Zealand versus Canadian, there's mm -hmm. probably 150 trades open. Yeah. Uh, but you can see here now with the higher balance that's in my account, yeah. I have, this is how many cells open I have right now. I have 228 cells open mm -hmm. uh, on the same pair. Yeah. Uh, but it's okay now because I have a higher balance. You can see my margin level is healthy here. So it's okay to do that. But um, yeah, and if this ends up being a loser, and maybe I can show a little bit uh, about what's in here as well. So this is from my, my algorithm. It's information for me. Um, uh, it shows here my stop losses on this pair, this trade. Yeah. If it hits all my stop losses, I'll still make $797 um, because they've, they've moved. They've because you keep trailing time. your stop, yeah? Correct. correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And on this one here, if it hits my stop losses, you can see my, my stops have trailed. These are cells as well. Mm -hmm. This is where it did all its selling. Currency mm -hmm. has moved down substantially since then. Um, so if it hits my stop losses here, my profits will be three thousand nine hundred. Mm -hmm. So I can see my my maximum and that this after the slash here, this is my maximum across all pairs. Mm -hmm. If it hits, if everything goes against me, everything goes the wrong direction today, mm -hmm. then I'll still come out with fourteen hundred uh, fourteen hundred dollars. Fourteen. So mm -hmm. even the positive, yeah. yeah. But when when the trades start. Uh, being opened, obviously this number is negative. I've had negative 4,000, negative 5,000, you know, because the trades are freshly open, they haven't moved enough yet. And if it hits your stops, you're going to get stopped out with negatives. Yeah. So, so what are your money management uh, rules when trading uh, your system? How much risk can you get exposed to in one single trade? Let's just say that you have an account of 10,000. How much are you willing mm -hmm. to risk on one collection of trades? 
Yeah, so basically it's this here. So this is, uh, again, it's not a, uh, it's a collection of all the currencies. So all, all the currencies, as, a, as in yeah. put all together in a basket, and that would be Correct. give you... And I have, I've set it for a maximum balance loss of uh, 65%. I'm going to probably reduce that now um, to maybe 50%. As my balance goes up, mm -hmm. I, I'm less comfortable losing 65% of it. Um, so I'll probably reduce that to like a 50% after these trades close, uh, just to, to kind of safeguard the nest egg yeah so right? this loss restriction can could could potentially be concentrated in one single market right so one single market that goes in the opposite direction that you're expecting you would allow that market to go against you for a maximum loss of 200 of um, that amount that you display yeah, in, in your screen you say market, I'm talking about all, all the currencies like all these currency windows I have open yeah this is calculating the total of yeah the so aggregated the I aggregated uh, amounts so this one so this one here might, might be a thousand dollar loss this one here might be a two thousand dollar loss mm -hmm. if i get to four thousand five hundred and fifty two which is sixty five percent of my current balance mm -hmm. stop taking trades and when do you determine num two questions here when do you determine that the market is not doing what you're expecting in the time horizon that you have been uh you know concluding that this should be you know moving in your favor and number two uh, what's the logic behind the adding of positions and do you kind of like tend to respect a specific bracket area where you're going to be filling all the positions and uh, what how you go about this um... so yeah i did a lot of research on that yeah. in the beginning on how to um when to actually take the trades mm -hmm. and it was a time-based approach versus a price rate based approach yeah um, and I found that the results were almost the same to do either way. Okay. So the time-based approach was was uh, just the easiest to implement. So we can see here, uh, maybe on the four-hour list, well, it's hard to see, maybe I can expand it. No, I can't expand it. So, but these were all taken at 15-minute uh, intervals here, mm -hmm. all these trades. So it's uh, small lots again, 0 .01, 0 0.01, which is the smallest lot size we can trade. Um, spread out in 15 minute intervals as long as those conditions hold. So again, the algorithm from the back testing says when these conditions are present, you should take a buy or a sell. Mm -hmm. uh, and as long as those conditions are, are held, so it's checking every 15 minutes and it's like, okay, 15 minutes, those conditions are there, take a sell trade. 15 minutes later, check again, still the same conditions, take another sell trade. If those conditions change, then you no longer take uh, Okay, more so in this case, and were you, you on selling the, uh, on the way up or on the way down? uh in new zealand jp1 i'll go back to it but i, I wanted to show okay. you this example yeah. here so this Let's... is the uh euro versus the aussie and you can see it only took four buys mm -hmm. so um the time frame again is one day so because um, i'm breaking up into monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday mm -hmm. so a day is obviously more more than four trades it should take a lot of trades but it, what it means is the conditions didn't hold here Right. So it took the things and it said, no, 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 something's a little bit fishy here. Stop taking buy trades. So it only ended up taking four buy trades. Um, but then to your question here. So here we took 228 sell trades mm -hmm. and you were asking, was it on the way up or on the way down? What I find just visually, it mm -hmm. seems to be a consolidation points. So if you see here, there was a, a bit of a downtrend mm -hmm. right here. I was doing a lot of selling. It was yeah. a consolidation. OK. There was another downtrend and you can see this little pocket here. Mm -hmm. There was a little bounce we can see that as a consolidation as well right mm -hmm. and then you have this range here which looks like these peaks here were, were also a little bit of consolidation that's what it seems to look like to me mm -hmm. um, is that it's it's around consolidation points where it's doing things yeah and uh, these are often referred to as periods of either distribution or accumulation and uh, the, right. that, that that's probably the times when the market is accumulating longs or shorts before it makes right. the aggressive impulsive move towards a specific right. direction that's when you want to be that, like, like this one yeah. here this looks very clear to me yeah so we had a, a very uh, severe downtrend here and then these were large swings i noticed these were like mm -hmm. full scent um and it just up and down and up and down for like Three weeks almost mm -hmm. but obviously it was a period like you like you're saying of accumulation or distribution mm -hmm. just you don't know which way it's going to go after right it could do this and then bounce back up or it could do all this we all know what's happening here we just don't know which direction it's going to go afterwards right yeah 
What's really interesting is that your system can identify periods where it is supposed to mitigate risk by just taking three trades and that's it, as the in the case yeah. of the Euro JPY, just because something is fishy, something is off. Whereas it's... in the market that we are seeing right now, New, New Zealand JPY, it looks like all the conditions are still in your favor or at least in line with the, the back testing that you've conducted through many years. Yeah. Therefore, it just keeps adding more and more positions to, a, to, to, to the extent that you can afford uh, to take those risks. So yeah, pretty much that's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. And now, what are your favorite markets to trade? What are the markets that have proven to you to be the most uh, profitable so far? Yeah. So I actually track that as well. So mm -hmm. it, this is, like I said, there's a lot of information in here squished into a small spot. So to somebody just looking at it, they might not know what any of this is. But yeah. Um, if I click through them, you'll see this uh, UTD. Yeah. You see this here? I do. This is up to date performance with Global Prime since I've been with you guys for maybe three years now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the whole history of trades for this currency pair. How has my success or failure been? And we can see, and we have to keep in mind also that there were those early algorithms in the beginning which were, were, which were not doing well. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is cumulative, like all time, I want to know. So the, the euro versus the yen, not so good here, right? Minus 1200. Uh, Australian dollar versus the yen as well, minus 1300, euro USD, minus 100. You can see these numbers here, right? Mm -hmm. But then we start getting into these ones versus the yen, like the Canadian dollar versus the yen, we now have a 3000 positive. Mm -hmm. uh, New Zealand versus the yen, uh, versus Canadian dollar, sorry, 2600 positive. New Zealand versus the yen as well, 2100. So they're the, the these would, I would say are my favorite because they made money. <laughs> yeah. So. I, what I did find through the back testing, since you mentioned favorite currencies, is that the US dollar mm -hmm. is horrible in terms of repetitiveness and patterns. You can see I only have one pair that's uh, based on US dollar, the euro US dollar. Uh, and and you still lost a little bit of money in there. Like you didn't actually make yeah. my, uh, profit yeah, in, right. on aggregated yeah. terms. Yeah. 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 It's real, I would write that off. It's relatively small. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only $100. But it's the only one that through my back, I, I back tested every currency pair let's bring this up here uh, yeah you can see here i went through pretty much every currency pair mm -hmm. and the green ones are the ones that had potential and the red ones are all the ones that had no potential all of the us dollar uh, uh pairs mm -hmm. all seem to be horrible in terms of repetitiveness over the over the years yeah why do you think that is? Me, do you do you question do you question why that is, or you just as a mathematician, as someone who is into numbers, just move on and just try to just simply stick to whatever resonates, whatever is uh, working? Yeah, that, that's what yeah. I was saying in the beginning. I, yeah. My my knowledge of markets and 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 all this stuff is pretty uh, amateur, mm -hmm. uh, so I just see it as like a technical problem. Mm -hmm. like, okay, I guess the U.S. dollar is not. Uh, is very is more random than not so it's not a good mm -hmm. part to trade and if i start thinking of reasons why i would probably say because a lot of people trade it mm -hmm. if there's a lot of retail traders in there it creates more noise and then it does become more random um where a lot of these obscure currencies or even ones that people are afraid to trade a lot of people are afraid to trade the, the pound versus the yen or mm -hmm. the euro versus the yen because there's a lot of volatility yep. so a lot of people stay away from that i, I read that early on in a lot of uh, forums people like don't trade the pound versus the yen because it can move like 2000 pips in one day and you mm -hmm. lose your shirt and so people tend to listen to that and stay away from that and go towards more of the what, what they consider the safe currencies mm -hmm. but if everybody's there it makes it uh, more random and yeah. less less opportunity to exploit right now I understand that you tap into price and um, uh, and time uh, components for your uh, discernible trading edge, but have you ever come across uh, a either one indicator or a combination of indicators that may have actually given you a little bit of a boost, a little bit of an extra edge just by combining those indicators uh, with yeah. your backtesting as well? So there is, yeah, I do use one indicator, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. um, I use the currency slope strength, Okay. Uh, CSS people call it. Yeah. Um, that's the only one I use. Um, to tell you the truth, but again, from mathematical perspective, I think it's just coincidence that I use that. Mm -hmm. I think you could use moving averages. I think you could use all kinds of different stuff, even more simple than the currency slope strength to yeah. still have success. The um, the details, which I'll get into, I guess, a bit later, um, are what are what really make it work. Not mm -hmm. necessarily the, the indicator that's being used. I think all indicators can probably work, mm -hmm. um, with with exception of some, I guess, that are 
uh, completely useless, but most of them probably they're based. They're all based around moving averages when it comes down to it. They're all based around mm -hmm. mathematics um, and, and what a currency is doing historically. That they have to be. None of them can predict the future. They're always based on the past. Um, so you can pretty much use any of them as long as it's structured right and you have some sort of algorithm which is taking the trades for you rather than you manually becoming emotionally attached to the trades yeah. and, and uh, trying to do things like that. Now, what makes your, like you're already touching it, but perhaps you can add another layer of uh, uniqueness to, to, to whatever you've already mentioned. And what makes your methodology to trade the markets unique? You mentioned that it has to do with uh, the, the, the time, the repetitive patterns that occur at certain times yeah. uh, of the day at different price levels. Is there anything else that would actually make your system that you consider it to be so unique? Um, yeah, I can take you through a kind of a short, brief walkthrough of how um, how it entirely works, and maybe that will show. The yeah, if, if it can be something that just uh, briefly touch upon, you yeah, know, on I'll try to, to sum it up um, on, on general traits. Yeah, what I do. So the the starting point is to run um, the back test. I have a little script here which will do it. Let me see. What programming language have you specialized on? Uh, um, to I've run done everything. So for this, okay. I've done. I've done uh, sorry, one second here. Let me do this. Let me do this. So this one is a batch file. So I code it in in just bat, DOS batch batch language to run. So this will run. This will open like eight MT4 windows. So I can run eight back tests at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to come up in a second. I've done the MQL4 obviously for coding the actual algorithm. I've done uh, Visual Basic because there's a, with all that data afterwards, you need to concatenate it all together and analyze it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just using an Excel spreadsheet to do that. Mm -hmm. But I had to do a lot of coding in Visual Basic in the back end in order for it to do um, what I wanted it to do. Let me just wait for this to come up here. It takes a second. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, while it's just uploading, um, mm -hmm. so essentially as a kind of like uh, ongoing conclusions that I'm coming I'm coming at just by listening to what you're saying would you then say that you are trading the markets not so much uh, like are you taking would you say that you are taking advantage of market flaws or that you are trading based on predicting market movements like would you what would be the 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 the, the most accurate definition of your approach because uh, at times yeah, I would say more the, more the latter it would be yeah the market movements yeah yeah mm-hmm so here you can see these are the windows loading up. It's, it's all automated. I have like a bunch of buttons that I've coded down here. I mean, this is where the, the computer engineering and programming background really helped because if I didn't have that, I don't know how I would do this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it was a lot of coding. Um, and I, I kind of don't appreciate how much coding it was over the years, but it was quite a bit. And I think, uh, who is it on the forum? John, John Grah, I believe. Is his, his handle in the forum talks about automating and automating is very important right so so what will happen here is um, these will open and then I have a little script here which is going to kind of run eight uh, tests all at the same time you're mm -hmm. gonna see it do this little automated thing hits all the start buttons automatically I'll just let one finish here. Uh, while that's going, I can bring this back up here. So do you actually... So yeah, this, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so I was about to ask you while it's a uh, loading app, like, do you require specific market conditions in order to succeed with your to succeed with your with your trading or do you believe that trading style that your trading style is, is kind of more deterministic? You know, as a because at the end of the day, basically, you're just telling me that your EA is going to identify certain patterns and is going to trade those patterns, right? Based on all that uh, back testing that you had, right? So you probably are not paying much attention either to a market that is trending or is uh, ranging just because the EA is going to do all the heavy lifting for you. Yeah, like absolutely uh, all of it. Uh, with, with with this one here, um, at which point was it? So I had these these cells open here, and the market turned around here. You can see the the peak of the candle was right up here. I'm like, oh, this is this is turning around. Mm -hmm. This is bad. But I'm, 
I knew from the past because my, my wife is my background financial advisor and she keeps telling me to close the trades when she mm -hmm. sees profit. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, no, I've done that before. And this is not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to, mm -hmm. you're supposed to hold what, what, what most traders do is they suffer a couple of losses and they're big losses. And then when they have a small win, they take that off the table right mm -hmm. away, never giving it the chance to run. Yeah. And you need to do the opposite. You need to add to your winners as they're as they're going down. I also I always you, told my wife that she's the perfect contrarian contrarian indicator yes, for me. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good uh, true. analogy. But it's not even her. It's not her. It's just it's me as well. Right? Yeah. I see that, and okay. I see like around here, maybe I had around two thousand dollars profit. Let's yeah. say right, mm -hmm. and then it turns around and now it gets cut in half to maybe a thousand or something. I'm like, you know, I should take that thousand because I almost had two thousand. I'm like, no, trust the algorithm trust what it's done it's done good for you in the past mm -hmm. and then sure enough you know we dropped another what three thousand billion pips here <laughs> i'm exaggerating mm -hmm. but you know what i mean it, it dropped substantially after that right mm -hmm. so a lot of times even today even today is an example like i said this was around my my open profits was around twelve thousand peak um uh, last night mm -hmm. and you know i'm i'm tempted because my balance is is 7,000 and you have an open profits of one and a half times your balance. Yep. It's very tempting to want to take it. It is, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then to see that loss of 4,000, it's all paper money, right? It wasn't real. I never, it's never mm -hmm. yours until it's realized and closed. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's it's really emotional to, to want to take that money and you really want to do it. And that's another reason why I think you have to have things coded mm -hmm. unless you have a hard heart of steel and a brain of steel mm -hmm. to be able to, to weather these kind of things. Um, that's why the coding takes that and I just, you know, close my eyes and I can go do something else for work and just ignore it and come back later and see what happened. Right. Yeah. Uh, so sorry, I was going to show you here. The yeah. So let's just uh, touch very briefly about how you go, you know, how you go about optimizing and backtesting models. Uh, that's, yeah. that's very interesting. So this is what it's going to do here. So let me just bring up one. So it's running eight at the same time mm -hmm. and this is testing right now. So this is testing the 2018 to 2020, the two-year time range um, for Euro versus Australian dollar. And you'll see how many back tests it's gonna run. I'm gonna just wait for the like, first one or two to come up. Mm -hmm. But it's basically doing the same thing on eight different windows at the same time, um, all on the same time range. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is that there's about 100,000 um, different tests it needs to run, different back tests, 100,000 variations we're gonna say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite a lot. Yeah, well, so basically it's all about permutations, right? So I'm using for currency slope strength, I'm using what is the hourly currency slope strength doing? What is the daily currency slope strength doing? Mm -hmm. And what is the weekly currency slope strength doing? Mm -hmm. So all of those I found through backtesting are all important. I found other ones like the monthly, what's it doing on the monthly time frame? Not very important. Mm -hmm. What's it doing on like the five minute, the one minute, the 15 minute? Also not important. Okay. Um, but for my back testing, hourly, daily, and weekly, all of those need to be uh, taken into account in all their different variations. Too. Mm -hmm. So, yep. is the hourly having a slope strength above 0.4? Let's say, is it above 0.8? Is it below zero? Mm -hmm. Is it below negative 0.4? And the same thing for the daily. Is it above two, four, six, eight? Is it below negative two, four, six, eight? And mm -hmm. then for the weekly, same thing. Yep. So you have to take all of those different per, uh, permutations. So ultimately, you've become a very, very much an independent thinker when, when it comes to developing your systems. Or have you ever had a very positive influence by someone who you would consider to have made like a, a big difference in in your in your trading? A big difference? No. I mm -hmm. mean, I was on the Steve Hopwood forums. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with yes, that. Yes. Yes. Um, I was on there for a bit, and but the attitude on there is a little bit excessive. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> from Steve, apologies if he's your friend, but <laughs> no, he. I mean, no, I'm I'm very I'm very well aware of uh, his uh, temper temper at times. Yes, his temper is a little bit much. It's it's, it's like ch a lot like children in there. But I did mm -hmm. learn a lot about coding in mm -hmm. there. I would say. And I kind of got my start. Nothing I'm using to this day. Well, you know what? I discovered currency uh, currency slope strength on mm -hmm. there. Yep. Uh, but I would have discovered it somewhere else anyway. Um, but that's that's really what kind of gave me the push. I think before being on that those forums, I wasn't doing any coding myself. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and that's what gave me the push to actually start coding. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that's about it. Not much. Like I was never on Forex Factory or any of these things. I never. Okay. Uh, Bought really, I bought a couple of indicators in the beginning, but 
nothing too much. It just honestly, it's it was just trying different things and failing on ninety percent of them, and then yep. trying to really think, you know, how can I do this? Right? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so, I think your your I mean, your probably, story really sorry. is uh, very uh, is very inspiring for those that are looking to. Uh, be able to at some point keep refining a trading strategy failing but failing better right so that's yeah. uh, where yeah. you know all the journey that you've been through uh, now in, in terms of uh, the the choice of a broker what what makes global prime your broker of choice to trade i mean which features global prime offers that uh, you consider vital for for your ea trading is it uh, something that for you has become pivotal to actually be uh, with us, just because of our spread, liquidity, latency, execution, well, pricing model. One of the things that I was most surprised about in the beginning, I, yeah. like I said, I was with a company called Quest Trade before, who was okay. literally two two blocks away from me in mm -hmm. Toronto here. Mm -hmm. And the, the tick data, when it would uh, it would move one tick like every five seconds. <laughs> wow. And I thought that's how the market moved. I'm like, it would take five seconds to, to move like one tick. And then when I switched to Global Prime, Global Prime was recommended on the Steve Hopwood forum, mm -hmm. uh, so we, we should thank them for that. Um, but when I when I switched to Global Prime and I saw, oh, this is really how the market moves, <laughs> mm -hmm. I was completely shocked that like that there was this much uh, volatility and this much activity because mm -hmm. I was only used to that other one before, which was moving extremely slowly. So mm -hmm. just the availability of data and having it come straight through, and I, I believe um, you guys is it called the ECN broker. To, to have that kind of transparency or say again sorry what's that is it called an ECN broker that you guys are that has that direct that uh, correct and, and and a broker type A because there are many brokers out there that are, are actually going to pretend that they're running an A book and that they are actually running the orders through their um through their own book. Yep. yeah exactly yeah, they're running, they're basically so their essentially own global broker. prime just takes a very small share in terms of commission yeah. from the from yes. the brokers but there's no conflict of interest by uh, relying on the traders losses for global yes. prime to make a profit and that is very very important and we are obviously uh doing as as good a job as as it's humanly possible so that uh, traders can feel like they are taken care of and that uh, at the end of the day i think that's what's going to create um, su a sustainable business model just because you yes. keep your clients uh, you, you keep your clients happy you know so yeah. that's the that's yeah, the whole that's point definitely one of the things i i looked into as well that i that i uh, noted about global prime is that you're not running this b book you know betting clients against each other mm -hmm. for my thing it uh I mean, I'm, I'm sure it is important and it, and it is benefiting me, but I guess for mine, maybe it didn't benefit as much because you know what, if everybody else is wrong, but my algorithm is right, mm -hmm. even if you're running a B book, I would assume that I would still come ahead. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's yeah, a but they, they're going to they're going to do all types of dirty tricks for you to correct, start withdrawing correct. money or to, uh, you know, restrict you from trading. Uh, you have no idea what what type of, uh, you know, uh, gray areas you can get into once you start being profitable in a B book broker. So those conflict of interest get you get know, eliminated. They're doing something shady, even yeah. though you might be able to benefit. They still might be, might be doing other things. Shooting, exactly. So. Now, uh, here's an important question for you. See what uh, what's your answer for this one? Like, there is a belief that creating a, a great uh, algorithm uh, system uh, at times comes with uh, the cost of uncertainty about uh, the old data that you've been using to to actually. Uh, predict the future and right. there is this belief that essentially the back data and the the old data is not going to be a guarantee of future results so essentially yes. some people might even think that your back testing might be dead the minute that you start using it just because you're basing your trades decisions on previous market activity yeah. now how do you as a successful uh, ea algo uh, slash algo trader reconcile with that fact that the market conditions your best your back testing went through may not be replicable in the future like how right, yeah right um so yeah you're 100 percent right and if that is the case then yeah. i don't think anybody can really make money mm -hmm. um because if that would mean that the markets are random right that how they've operated in the past mm -hmm. is not how they're going to operate it in, operate in the future and if mm -hmm. that's true i can't in my brain reconcile how it's possible to make money um i think fundamental trading mm -hmm. i think is 
overly complicated. I mean, there's going to be insiders who have the information way before you do. So by the time you have the information, no matter how much you pay for, for those like squawk services and mm -hmm. stuff, there'll be somebody who has it before you who's, who's lobbied to get it or paid to get it. Um, so the, the move will always, already happen before you have the information. So for me, fundamental trading right away was a write-off. Yep. I'm not saying it can't be done. I don't want to write, write off everybody from doing it. But in my mind, in my brain, I'm like, I can't do that. I don't know how to gather and amass enough information. So uh, already ruling out that I can't be a fundamentals trader, it has to come down to technicals. And technicals, it's either either the market is repetitive or it's not. Yeah. Um, so I can show you, like if I do a little bit more of this walkthrough, I can show you, um, yeah. you it, will, it will all come together. <laughs> yeah. So one of the ways I mitigate the, the data to mm -hmm. ensure that I have the most reliable data, I do subscribe to this service. It's uh, uh, Tick Data Manager. Yeah. yeah, Tick Data Suite. Uh, you're familiar with it, right? Yeah, I am. Um, so this allows, it's like $15 a month or something, mm -hmm. but it guarantees, it makes everything so much easier. And I always have the latest uh, updated Tick Data. I don't rely on the MT4 data from then to pull it, it was always really random and weird. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just show you here. So this is what I was talking about running the back tests. Mm -hmm. So here it's running, it's doing, it's done 79 of 11,000 back tests. And this is repeated across eight different um, windows that I have open here. They're mm -hmm. all running around 10 to 12,000 back tests. So I'll close that down now. Let me close those. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's closed. Once I have that, uh, those back tests, so that was over a two year period, 2018 to 2020. Um, I do that over multiple ranges of time because you can't take one, one thing that people do is they'll take like a short range of time, say a two year period, mm -hmm. they'll run their back tests and they're like, wow, it did fantastically over that. It must be good. They put it live, they lose all their money. You need to do, um, I forgot what it's called, forward uh, walk testing or yeah, walk forward testing. Yeah. So what I do to kind of uh, uh, have the same results as walk forward testing, you see these tabs here, year, two year, four year, eight year, 10 year. So this is, uh, it's actually two years back, but this is like, this is the 2018. This is all the, the optimized data you can see here. This is my results from, so there's about 100,000 lines of data. These are all the optimizations, each one of those tests over the two year period from 2018 to 2020. I do that as well from 2016 to 2018. I do that as well from 2014 to 2016, from 2012 to 2014, and from 2010 to 2012. So now I've went back 10 years worth of, of data. I've mm -hmm. ran those, you remember all those permutations I was talking about, the currency mm -hmm. slope strength, hourly, daily, weekly, over 10 years, but in two year uh, increments. So mm -hmm. you're not testing over the whole period entirely, you're testing separate periods, mm -hmm. right? Then at that point, this is where uh, the VBA coding comes in. So what it's going to do here, this is an automated script, is going through all of those 10 years, the overlapping stuff, putting in different profit factors. So it's like, okay, I want to have a profit factor of one in each year. I want to have a minimum trades of 100 in year each year. What are going to be my resultant um, trades? What, what trades would I take mm -hmm. based on that data? Uh, it might be a little bit complicated. It, it all works in my head. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it definitely makes but, sense to you. That's that's what counts, and that the steps. But if, you, but if you understand, you're doing, you're yeah. testing. How does this work over a, uh, over the two year period, the mm -hmm. four year period before that, six year, eight year, ten year, and then find something that worked in all of those years. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. In all of those two two year periods, and that's what this is doing. And all these little tabs below, these R eight, R nine, R forty, etc. Those are are. Uh, taking this data and then I can test it later. So, so essentially you, you are going to get pretty much on the go a red flag if the system starts to being off or not performing as it would be expected, right? Because of the, the opposite, it will tell me the best one. So what the best, was the best mm -hmm. out of all of that? What was the best result? And then I'll just show you the one test here. So where's my, I think it was NC CAD. And this is this is some of the MQL4 uh, MQL4 coding here. Okay. This was NCT cat. Okay. This one everybody will understand. <laughs> Sorry that that was a little bit complicated. All this like back testing in Excel, but everybody will understand this test. This is kind of what I'm going to show you now is kind of the final result. Mm -hmm. So after all that back testing over 10 years, 
after seeing that it has uh, agreement among all those different two-year walk-forward periods, yeah. after putting it in Excel, and Excel spitting out, okay, this is the best set of values for you, mm -hmm. then I can run a, an actual test now over 10 years, and you'll see what the graph looks like over a 10-year period. Which, by the way, so this is this this is your 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 common or your usual uh, backtesting uh, the, the the activity that you're gonna actually go through when backtesting, yes. which is gonna be essentially just putting that uh, EA to work and then getting that chart with exactly. hopefully that exactly. equity and curve that work, goes. That's the ongoing work that needs to be done instead of the you know I've developed it, I can retire now and it just makes money. The ongoing work is constantly. You know, every six months to a year is my plan to mm -hmm. update all of those currencies and see what the latest data is, right? So you're always staying fresh with data. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So I actually run it, even though I've only tested on a 10-year uh, period back to 2010, I actually run it back to 2006 mm -hmm. to see if there's any anomalies back there as well. So take some data that's completely outside what you've tested mm -hmm. and see how it, uh, how it reacts in there. So this is the optimized one for New Zealand versus Canadian dollar from 2006 to 2020. We'll put it in a graph. I'm to put this in there. So this goes back 14 years, eh? 2006 to 2000. That, is that how far back you've gone, back testing? That's how far back the, the data goes for okay. uh, ticket data suites. So Got it. And you can see, and it's going to go down, you know, there's going to be losses, right? Mm -hmm. But you want to see the graph in its entirety at the end and if it looks decent then you can it can be implemented what would you consider the a graph that looks decent do you look for certain kpis or parameters that you want to be met for you to consider uh yeah so the market looking for pro profit factor to be high okay. number of trade number mm -hmm. of trades to be mm -hmm. uh decent because it's easy to design a system that takes uh one trade over 10 years mm -hmm when all the conditions are right. So you want to have a decent amount of trades to actually have some sort of profit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those are the main things that I yeah. look at. And after uh, developing so many trading systems, uh, many of those essentially just being refinements of your existing approach, what is your what would be your biggest piece of advice for any retail trader looking to learn algo trading and, you know, to the, or even what would you tell to the younger you, you know, what is the best uh, uh, piece of advice that you would give to yourself or to others that are starting after going through hundreds of uh, uh, EA, uh, you know, I would interaction. Say two, two things. One, develop it yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're using something that somebody else developed, it's probably not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have to put in the effort. You have to put in the work, right? So if, it, yep. if, if you bought something for a hundred bucks off of some forum, it's probably not going to do anything for you. So, um, uh -huh. And second thing I would say is to try and learn coding if possible. Um, it, it's really, it really helps a lot because I think the reason that the market works in these kind of cycles, why this, this algorithm is even able to work, mm -hmm. is because human psychology pretty much stays the same over time. So if you, if you think um, uh, kind of philosophically about what's happening in the markets, my algorithm is taking trades 20 to 60 days before the move is going to happen, where I'm going to make the money. Mm -hmm. That means that the, the big institutions and the big money know exactly what's going to happen in 20 to 60 days, and they're preparing for it. Mm -hmm. They're also putting their, their trades at that time, right? So they're kind of knowing what, what psychologically the retail traders are going to do 20 to 60 days in advance, mm -hmm. right? So they're kind of stealing your money. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Um, so the human psychology stays the same. So the, the, the big players are like, okay, we want to, we want to sell this currency. How do we do it? Okay, we'll, we'll do this, you know, mm -hmm. and they know exactly what's going to work from a psychological perspective that all the retail traders are going to go long on the currency. And then when the time is right, they just go short. So that's why I think the markets are repetitive because the, the big institutions are setting retail traders up to be, to be duped, to take their money and retail traders fall for it over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my my theory, I guess, on why the markets are repetitive because human psychology stays. The same. I've always believed that the markets are, to a certain extent, in a more intraday basis. There's all that noise and all that randomness that occurs, but yeah. if you step back, then there's definitely a rhythm. There's definitely this uh, discernible patterns that your EA happens to identify and exploit. Right. Otherwise, as you said it wouldn't make sense that you are able to anticipate on a fairly consistent basis plays that are going to be making money 
right? right. So at, uh, at the end of the day, I believe that this is definitely a, an approach that is, is very much um, it's very much workable and uh, yeah. you are the, the example of that. Your, your work proves that this is a theory that it might not be uh, holding much weight if you were to just analyze one or two sets of data uh, the, the last mm. couple of years. But mm. when you go back 14, 15 years, there's definitely more bit meat in the bone. There's definitely something, yes. something else going on. And well, you can see this. This is the 14 year here, right? So yeah, this exactly. This is the 14 year over New Zealand versus uh, Canadian dollar. And uh, like I said, there's no, I don't think anybody can ever have a graph that's completely smooth and straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right now. But you can see here, if we look at uh, the report, we have a profit factor of 2.16 over a 14 year period, mm -hmm. 13,000 trades, and a uh, total net profit of $1.2 million over over 14 year period. So that sounds decent to me. And if we look at our drawdown, uh, drawdown is what, 32% not mm -hmm. bad over that, that period. Mm -hmm. um, but just the graph itself shows me what I need to know, right? And this is what I've, what I've seen as well, is that you have a, a large boost in your in your open profits here, and mm -hmm. then it hits your, your trailing stop and closes. Same, goes up, hits your trailing stop and closes, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, the, and there are losers here. Like you can see periods like here where it goes down and goes down. So two steps forward, one step back, right? Exactly, yeah. You reach a peak, uh, you reach a peak, and then you go through uh, a bit of a plateau on the way down, and then it yeah. goes higher into new highs. And yeah, yeah the data uh, is speaks volumes and speaks by itself. So again, if you you were talking about future predictability, mm -hmm. so if this is if this is what it did over the last fourteen years, then the expectation is hopefully over the next few years it would do something similar. It mm -hmm. could go, you know, this could be the peak here, and it goes completely opposite the way. You know, opposite way afterwards, but you know, how how far back is actually one of the, the challenges is how far back do you need to go to have more confidence in your data? Is fourteen years enough? Maybe I only need yeah. four years. Maybe only two years. Maybe I need a hundred years. Right? Uh, is is one of the issues? How far do you back test to be confident in your data? Right? Now, what happens when your EA has filled all the orders possible that you have? Just say you have maximum exposure. And the conditions start to change against you. How are you gonna be? How your how is your EA gonna be a, uh, mitigating that risk? So you just gave me the example of your JPY. The moment that started to notice that conditions were starting to right. change, three three trades and done, no more. Yeah. So very exactly. minimal, very minimal yeah. risk. But what so, happened? Yeah, this one here. What happened four, if you've been filled with multiple multiple orders, and for whatever reason you are. Uh, holding quite a bit of risk and right. the market just keeps going against you. When is it that you are going to call it, uh, you know, quits? And the, the algorithm does it for me. It's just the stop losses. Okay. So the stop losses are, are calculated in certain positions as well. So this uh, this graph that we see here, so the, all of these, everything that's closed yeah. has all been from a stop loss. Is it a stop loss, loss? Correct. A loss mm -hmm. or from a trailing stop loss, mm -hmm. right? So, so at the very beginning, at the very beginning of this uh, graph, notice, uh, just go back to the graph. At the very beginning of it, notice that there is a, a very pronounced downward yep. uh, movement. That essentially means that the market it just kept hitting stock after stop after stop in, yep. in, in different in different trading conditions, yep. I suppose. Not, yep. not just in one single trade, uh, in one yep. single market, right? Yeah, exactly. And so something like this doesn't concern me as much because mm -hmm. remember I'm testing back to 2006, mm -hmm. uh, which is which we would kind of say is old old data. It's 14 years. Yeah. Old. Yes. So yeah, I want to see more of a smooth area here mm -hmm. rather than here. Um, we don't know what happened over here, but yeah, this could happen again, right? Mm -hmm. It's one of the, the the risks, I guess, of. of of doing this so. now what would you say was your through all these uh, uh, years of development what has been or tra of tra or trading what's been your your biggest mis mistake is that is something that sticks to your mind as something that you would never uh, fall into the trap of doing again or biggest mistake yeah is that something that you regret dearly as I, I, would say, I would say no because okay. all of the mistakes helped me to learn okay um, you ha you have to make mistakes. If you don't make mis, I made lots of them. Yeah, right? you you embrace those mistakes for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I embrace them and I learn from them and it helps me to to develop a better system. Right. If I didn't have those mistakes, I would have never yeah developed the system. Right? And, and I'm still gonna have mistakes. Yeah. Every day I'm thinking of or maybe not every day, but every week or so I'm always thinking of ways that I can make make the system better. So yeah. 
that, that's why I'm on version 45 of just this. There you go. Yeah. One, mm -hmm. right? But there's always going to be a, a very th uh, thin line for you to walk right through uh, to avoid over optimization. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That, and that's where I kind of, you know, I'm, I'm accepting a, a profit factor of like two. And I think, you know, if I'm going to really try and squeeze it and squeeze it to like a 2.5 or a three or whatever profit factor, I might end up killing the whole system because mm -hmm. you over optimized it too much curve fitting. Right. So, um, yeah. So where do you see yourself in, in five or 10 years? Maybe that's something that, uh, you might not want to venture into just, uh, you know, thinking to, to hard ahead, but, uh, it definitely shows that your system has an enormous potential at the point, at the point where you are now at the point uh, in time mm -hmm. where you are now not, um, your system seems to be registering some astronomical returns based on the initial capital of eight or 900 you mentioned before. Yes, and now yeah. you seem to be standing at seven or 8,000 of close profits plus 8,000 plus running yesterday was yes. 12,000. So yes. what, what's your approach once you start accumulating uh, this uh, outsized let's just call it by market standards, uh, profits, uh, do you consider, let's just say, uh, redistributing your profits into other accounts just to guarantee that the, the profit is, uh, is protected and then you just try to be a bit more aggressive in other accounts or do you just want right. to just essentially keep um, piling up into, into I, this? I would just, yeah, I haven't really thought about it much. I okay. It's, uh, it's nice to think about that, but... I do expect there will be some losses because like mm -hmm. we, we've seen in that chart, it's not going to go one direction up. Um, so yeah, I do expect losses. So this, like I said, this was 12,000. This might, this, you know, it was a 12,000 peak. I might close out at six, but I should be happy that I had six, like 6,000 versus zero mm -hmm. <laughs> or versus minus 6,000 is a good deal. So there are going to be losses that accumulate, but um, I mean, it, it's good points you make about splitting it up into multiple accounts, but I haven't thought, thought really that far. My thought is just, and being more risky, you were talking about taking more risk taking, like maybe I can loosen my, my algorithm a little bit to take more trades. Um, I mean, it's possible, but I, I really haven't thought that far yet. So I would just let it, I'm going to just let it run for now. Yeah, is that, it's, mm -hmm. it's still relatively small in terms of like, it's not sustaining our, our living or anything like that. Yeah. Um, it's still relatively small for me to start saying, aha, it's a success. Um, but yeah, so. I would probably just leave it as is for now. Yeah.